I am a woman in my mid-fifties. Unfortunately, my father passed away at a young age, which meant that I grew up living with my mother and my younger brother. Given the six-year age gap between my brother and me, I naturally took on the responsibility of caring for him while our mother went to work. This experience instilled in me a strong sense of responsibility. Moreover, my mother's own frailty and frequent illnesses further motivated me to take care of those around me. Consequently, working part-time since my high school days became a daily routine for me, alongside taking care of my family. Although it was an important period for me to focus on my studies, I continued to juggle my part-time jobs. However, one day, my mother called me and said, Janice, focus on your studies. If you don't seize this opportunity now, you may never catch up later. It will only become more challenging. I appreciate your concern for your brother and me, but if you truly care about us, you must prioritize your education. It is when you think of us. Moved by my mother's words, I made the difficult decision to quit all my jobs and dedicate myself wholeheartedly to studying. I chose to forego hanging out with friends and instead focused solely on my academic pursuits. Although this decision might have caused some of my friends to feel hurt, the majority followed suit and began prioritizing their studies as well. Thanks to my relentless efforts, my grades consistently improved, and by my senior year of high school, my test scores were impressive enough to apply to the university of my choice. I am grateful for my mother's wish, as it served as a catalyst for my determination to succeed. Of course, my class grades needed to be also included, so I was worried because I fell a bit behind in my freshman year. Thus, I worked even harder. As a result, I was able to get into a good university. My mom and younger brother liked that because I became a student at a prestigious university, but more than that, I was happier because my educational background would be helpful to my family. When I entered college, I thought that joining a stock investment club would be helpful to get a job rather than a club for my hobby. I didn't know that before, but I found out that I had a talent at investing. I learned a lot about how to invest in stocks and was active in the stock investment club and even received an award in assimilated stock investment competitions. After gaining confidence, I wanted to pursue my career in it because it was related to my major. It wasn't difficult to study either. And upon graduation, I got a job as a fund manager. Because I was the youngest among the recruits, I did a lot of research work in my spare time. I also invested here and there as I made a profit. I was able to help a lot financially at home, especially my younger brother was at an age very sensitive to wearing brand, so he was delighted that he could buy sneakers or clothes that he wanted. All those made me feel proud and feel good that I was earning enough money. I didn't even feel tired while working because it was so fun to earn money for my family. I was immersed in work to see the value of my stocks rise as well. When I gave plenty of spending money to my brother, he once said to me, from now on, I plan to study stocks. So rather than getting money from you, when I become your age, I want to earn my own living. So teach me how to invest in stocks. I agree that you learn that instead, you should not neglect to your studies if you promise that I'll teach you. Since my brother said he would study hard whenever I had time, I taught him little by little about investing in stocks. My younger brother had a good head on his shoulders, so he understood very quickly and learned fast. Two years passed quickly as I lived my life feeling happy about the little things at work. I barely graduated from doing only the research job and started working as a full-fledged investor in earnest. A few months later, the managing director called me and said, I hear that you made a lot of money by investing personally, but it seems you have developed yourself very well while doing research. Speaking of which, I'm starting a company. Would you like to come with me? I can't pay you a higher salary than here, but I'll give you a better incentive. Instead, I was nervous that I might get scolded, so I was surprised by the unexpected offer. The managing director said that he wanted to establish an investment company and was preparing all this time. It was a startup company, so it'll be hard, but I thought it would be rewarding also, 
I was confident that I will receive an incentive. I decided to follow him and started preparing together from that day, although there was a lot more to do than I thought. It was so nice to be able to learn each and every little thing. A few months later, the managing director established the company as planned, a few other employees and I moved to the managing director's new company. The managing director selected several new companies and held a briefing session for investors. He aggressively marketed his investment portfolios. Because of that, I often stayed up all night working at the company, but it was really rewarding because I did well in everything I did. It was nice to work in a big company, but I was happier and felt more alive, feeling the pulse while making money. In the meantime, my younger brother became a senior in high school and was busy preparing for the SAT exam to go to college. He agreed with me to stop studying stocks until he got admitted to college. My younger brother wanted to continue learning about stocks, but because of that, if he neglected his studies and failed to enter college, it'll be in vain. So my mom and I stopped him. My brother listened to us, and he got into college and not long after I was promoted to assistant manager position. Every day was lively and enjoyable. Then I met a man at a gathering of investment companies. He showed interest in me from the beginning and actively approached me. At the time I was at what was often called the right age for marriage. My mom also repeatedly says that it would be nice if I met a good person soon. I enjoyed my job, but since my friends were getting married one by one, I also was thinking then should I get married too? As those things came together. So I ended up dating the guy since I was doing the same work as him. We were able to communicate well and we had similar interests, so there was nothing uncomfortable with him. I had a few boyfriends in college, and when I talked about stocks or statistics, they often got bored or didn't understand what I was talking about. I met only those kinds, and when I met a man who understood everything I was saying, I felt as if I met a soulmate that made me feel more interested in him, and he and I became close in a short period of time. And it soon developed into relationship to be engaged. When he came to meet my family, my mom and younger brother liked him, and I went to his house. His parents also welcomed me. His mother held my hand when she met me for the first time. Saying, your face looks like cool, have good fortune. Only when someone like you comes into our family, good fortune would come in. Because elders often believed in such superstitions and sometimes just say that to make you feel good. So I just laughed it off. But even at the meeting of both sides of the family, the atmosphere was also good. He was fond of my brother, probably because he was an only child who had no other siblings and said, Hey John, if you run out of money, tell me at any time. I'll give you whenever you need some. Don't think of me as a brother-in-law, but as your real brother. Okay. Even if he was just saying it, I appreciated and felt I could rely on him. My younger brother told me that he felt uneasy when my husband treated him so kindly, but still he was thankful for it in a good atmosphere. We got married and set up our newlywed home, not too far away from my in-laws. Even though I got married, I wanted to continue working at that time. When a woman gets married, it was taken for granted that she quits working. Of course, there were more cases where married women stayed working than before, but the husband or the mother-in-law had to agree. So I brought up the subject cautiously to my husband and in-laws. I didn't even resign from the company because our company has a wonderful CEO who does not give any disadvantages because I got married and gives a lot of leeways, so could I continue working? Then my mother-in-law said, of course you should. You are the type who will bring good wealth to the family, so why should you waste your talent? I feel a person who can earn money should I. If the two of you earn money, then you'll be able to save money faster, so wouldn't that be better? Then my husband said, that's right. I think it's outdated thinking that when women get married, they have to quit their jobs and stay at home. I feel that if women are capable, they should achieve as much as they can, so I'm all for it. They welcomed my decision. At the time, I didn't know what to do, 
so I thought I had to get permission from my husband and in-laws to work at my job. Thus, I was very grateful to the two of them and even thought that I had a really good marriage. Even when I had a lot of work, my husband accommodated me with my schedule as well, and he didn't say anything when I didn't cook sometimes. On the contrary, he said that it was good and wanted to eat out anyways, and even brought a takeout dinner for me, but those days didn't last long. About six months since we got married, my husband gradually revealed his true callers. At first, he said that he lost money on his investment and asked me to help out with the living expenses. You can't lose money on your investment. And then you have a salary. So why are you giving me only this for living expenses? I gave my mom my salary. Didn't you know, did I tell you? You never said anything like that. That's absurd. It's understandable that you just give her some spending money, but how could you give her your entire pay? That's not quite right. Honestly, weren't you the one being sensitive that I might be giving a lot of money to my family? That's why I gave my family just a little bit of spending money. So how could you do that? Since you are married now and you are part of my family. So the case is different. I was so stunned that I couldn't speak when he said that. Then I told him to tell his mom that he couldn't give her all his pay since he lost money in the investment. But he said he could never do that. So I met my mother-in-law, but she said, hey, that's why I've been telling you about it so many times. You are the one who would make money in our family. The one who can earn money needs to go out and earn it. My son's horoscope is that he's the spender, not an earner. But what can we do if this happens? We are just two old people with only a small amount of pension that doesn't cover our living expenses. So can you cover it for us? Mother. I'll give you this check card here since it's my personal checking account. Please use it only for living expenses. After settling the matter and returning home, but my husband was wearing pajamas and eating snacks while watching TV, so I asked him, why are you home so early? Didn't you go to work? What happened? Oh, I resigned. I'm going to start a business in a little while. There is still time. So in the meantime, I'm going to take a break. Business. What business? You haven't said anything to me yet. Is your company investing in it? What item is it? I'm partnering with my friend, but he says it's the car accessories side. I don't know the details. Oh, right. Since you brought it up about investment, can your company invest in it? Our company is not interested in it at all. When I heard it, it didn't seem to have any perspective besides, my husband had no idea what kind of business it was. At least he worked at an investment company and there were a lot of car accessories. So I said, how could he not analyze which of item is it? What is the look where and how to make a profit? So I criticized him. My partner told me that he knew everything about that and I saw that it wasn't too bad. So don't worry too much, but I didn't believe it. When I looked at the business plan, I saw that it was too vague without any detailed revenue and profit model, whether even if it was a small car accessory, it was based on technology or it was distributed from somewhere with an exclusive contract. There were many types, right? I didn't think I would ever accept a plan like this. When I said that my husband got rather angry, Oh, be quiet. Is this work or home? Do I have to listen to what I used to hear at work at home again? Let me rest. I want to rest. I have worked so hard at the company and even when I didn't like the job, it was really hard to go to work all this time. He slammed the door and went in. Over six months had passed since he started not doing anything at home like that. I had always enjoyed earning money and spending it on my family, but I didn't feel that way at all back then. Rather, it was hard work. I had to earn money by myself to pay for our living expenses, installment savings and living expenses for my mother-in-law as well. 
On top of that, my mother-in-law sometimes got me into trouble by buying rings and necklaces with my card without telling me in advance. When I asked her to refrain from doing that, she would always complain. The daughters-in-law of other families earn money and do everything for them. But I get nagged even when I buy merely one of these things. What a pitiful life I have. You are a greedy person who wants to pile up money so only you can enjoy life for yourself. Whenever that happened, my father-in-law glared at me, cleared his throat as if he was displeased and slammed the door to enter his bedroom. I asked my husband, when was he to start doing that business, and he said that it turned out that there was no business. So I asked you to ask your company about investing in my business. What is this? I suddenly became unemployed. Then get a job again. No, I don't want to go to work for a company anymore. Originally, my horoscope said that I would become a president of a company, but I became drained because I had to work as an employee at a company. He was talking nonsense. I tried to endure it somehow. Even then, three months passed by, but my husband still insisted that he wanted to stay at home and do nothing. I thought that I should not go to the end, but an incident happened that broke my heart. My mother-in-law bought a luxury bag worth $10,000 with my card. I immediately went and begged her to go immediately for a refund. What did you do for my birthday this year? Didn't you just buy me some cosmetics? Just because my son doesn't earn any money. I feel like suffocating because I get nervous around you because you act like that my son's future is all blocked. Your horoscope said that you would earn money, but you would only spend it for yourself. And I didn't believe it at first, but it is all true. So if you're going to continue like that, then get out of our house. She was yelling at me instead, my husband was giving me a dirty look and we ended up getting divorced a few months later after we used separate rooms. After I left, I was passing by my ex-husband's house by accident when I saw him coming out with a woman. I didn't know, but I found out that he was dating her before we decided to get divorced. She even met with his family. I was so angry at the thought that I had been completely used, but I had already signed divorce papers, so I didn't know what to do. But my younger brother came to me and handed me a bank passbook with a checking card. I saved money in my spare time by investing in stocks that I learned from you sis. Let me know where is a good investment place. I was surprised that it was a fairly large amount. My younger brother said he wanted to become an investor and set up an investment company later. He said from now on he wanted to try investing. Coincidentally, there was a startup company that our company was promoting with a good item and profit model, so I recommended it to my brother. He read the business plan carefully and said it was good, so he invested. By the time my brother served and got discharged from the army and graduated from college, the company had settled down and began expanding. Of course, my brother made a lot of money. He used the money to invest in another company. He even bought a building for our mother. Then he got a job at an investment firm and worked for five years and said he really wanted to start an investment company. So I discussed the matter with my company, CEO. The CEO said he would like to run the company with my brother. I was still looking for someone to partner with, so I hope you will accept my offer along with your brother. I kept getting promoted and became the managing director at a relatively young age. It was because the CEO recognized and valued my skills highly. My brother and I had been thinking about it a lot. Partnerships come with a lot of risks. Still after seeing the reputation the CEO had built up in this industry and what he had done so far, my brother decided to work with the CEO. In fact, there were many good things for us too, because it was much easier than a startup. My brother said that he would like me to be a co-president, just like the CEO said, but this is your money. I learned all of this from you and earned it. It's thanks to you for letting me know where to invest, and if I am a managing director at this age, I have achieved success, so I'm in favor and I have to learn more from you since I still lack so much. He encouraged me as the company grew further. 
I was looking for a new office building, and I heard that a suitable property was on sale. So I went to see it with my brother. The building was good for our company to use, so I went there to sign the contract. However, I bumped into a cleaner who was cleaning the stairs, so my clothes got wet. I'm sorry, but you should look ahead and see where you're going. I was so surprised to see the cleaning lady who was criticizing me. She was my ex-husband's mother. Come to think of it, I thought the man she was working with looked familiar, but he turned out to be my ex-husband. He looked so terrible that I almost didn't recognize him. My ex-husband saw my brother and me and hesitated, but quickly he ran out of the building and disappeared. We signed the contract with the landlord and came out of the office, but my ex-mother-in-law was waiting outside and grabbed my hand. Honey, are you okay with your clothes? It looks expensive, but what should I do? Since it got all messed up. By the way, are you still at the company? Then she asked me for my business card. I was going to ignore her, but I wanted her to see that I was co-president. So I handed her my business card before we left. Then she came to my work the next day. You've become the co-president. After all your horoscope was right, that you would earn a lot of money. The reason I came here is to ask for your help for my son just once. He was also doing well in his business, but he's taking a break right now because there aren't enough people to invest in. So could you do something about it? If it's a good business, why is he taking a break? Is he going around to clean the buildings? I don't understand, and why should I help your son? I don't meet anyone who doesn't make an appointment in advance. Send this person out of here. Then two of my employees came and asked my ex-mother-in-law to leave. But she stubbornly sat on the sofa and wouldn't budge. How can you do this to us? Still there's a bond since once we live together in the name of family. But if you turn away like this, just because we are a bit poor, it's not the right thing to do. You, she cried out loudly and the staff looked at me and didn't know what to do because of you who are, once my family. I'll never marry again. I don't even want to see you ever again, so I don't even eat anything that reminds me of you. What bond? I don't know what business your son is in, but our company is not a charity that invests in just anyone. Hurry up and get this older lady out. Then my staff grabbed my ex-mother-in-law, pulled her up from both sides. My mother-in-law grabbed my clothes and wouldn't let go. I'm really sorry if you were hurt about anything. Still can't you look after someone as if you are saving someone? I'm begging you. What do you mean I was hurt? You give me the shutters and if he has something to say, he should come in person. What is he doing? Sending his old mother first like this. She was forced out almost by being dragged out the next day. My ex-husband showed up as soon as he saw me. He talked big that if I invested in his business, he would pay back double the contracted amount. Now you can write the contract like that in the first place. Do you know how many entrepreneurs trying to catch investors in this way? First of all, you are not the type to run a business. You want work just by listening to your mother's gibberish talks about your horoscope. So how could you succeed in any business? You should never come back here after you stayed home doing nothing by leeching off your wife. Then you have enough affair with another woman and pick a fight to get divorced. Would you like to be in the news for that? I was sorry. Then don't do this and save me just once. Ha. Huh. I've had issues too. My mom liked that woman's horoscope and kept asking me to meet her. I'm sorry. Don't you think of yourself, do you do what your mother tells you to do after she sees her horoscope? We could never invest in such a person. Are you trying to make others suffer because of you? He begged me to help him just once but I refused him coldly. My ex-husband was running a business with the money of his married, married woman, and he said that the woman took all of her business funds and ran away, so he was completely broke and outed on the street. He mentioned that his partner abruptly ended all communication after receiving his share of the profits. 
As a result, my ex-husband suffered a significant financial loss, losing all his investment money. This setback had a ripple effect, impacting my former in-laws' financial situation as well. They were forced to seek employment through a cleaning agency and work tirelessly to make ends meet. It was disheartening to witness their struggles, especially considering how they had treated me and my ex-husband, prioritizing their own comfort over our well-being. Furthermore, my ex-husband's actions compounded my feelings of anger and resentment as he entered into a new relationship. Although I have severed all ties with him, the emotions still linger. Consequently, I have chosen to embrace a single life and have no desire to remarry. Despite my brother finding a loving partner, getting married, and starting a family, my mother assures me that I am fully capable of living independently, and marriage is not a necessity for my happiness. Presently, I reside with my mother and cherish the quality time I spend with my brother's family. This is where my story concludes. Thank you for lending an ear to my narrative. I sincerely wish you nothing but positivity and happiness in your life. Please continue to support and share your words of wisdom in the comments section. Your likes and subscriptions mean a great deal to me and provide significant support. Wishing you a splendid day ahead.